Hello everyone, my name is James Brown and I work here at Prezi Point. Today we will explore the live view mode. We've talked about instant scan and slide scan in our other tutorials. If you haven't seen those videos, we'll link them in the description so you can keep learning about what the M8 has to offer. With live view, you can operate the M8 like a regular light microscope. So let's jump right into live view mode. We have to first start MicroPoint and wait until all the hardware has initialized. And click the Live View mode. I have already placed my sample, but in case you want to see how to place slides, we'll have the video linked in the description. Just like in instant scan mode, we have our overview image, where our exact position in the slide is shown. Our viewport image and our controls are on the left side, where you can see the magnification and our position details. On the right side, we have the fine and coarse drive. The button to switch between the different modes, the change slide button, the setting button, where we can apply the illumination correction, which we show on our instant scan tutorial. And finally, our info bar, which we will see it used later. So navigating this mode is quite simple. If you have a touch device, simply use your fingers to do so. Or we can do it with the mouse. Simply select, hold it down, and now move the mouse where you want. The second variation of moving in a direction is called flick. While clicking on the left mouse button, move it quickly and release. We can also move in the slides quickly by the overview image by simply clicking the region of the sample we want. There is an option to zoom in and out by pressing the control key and scrolling the wheel of the mouse. But zooming doesn't mean that it will focus. As you can see, our sample is quite blurry at the moment. Let's see how the manual focus works. We can focus by clicking the left mouse button Hold it until you see a clear image and release. Another way is to use the Z-axis control elements on the right. The fine drive and the coarse drive. The fine drive is slower and mainly used when you are close to the sample. To do so, just left click and drag up or down the Z-axis until you see a clear image. With the fine drive, you navigate at a much slower speed compared to the coarse drive. The coarse drive still allows you to navigate the z-axis, but at a much higher speed. Coarse drive is the scale of velocity. This middle line is a zero point, meaning zero velocity. A small note, the fine drive and the coarse drive are controlled differently from each other. If you want to move down, click on the lower part of the z-axis control element. And if you want to move up the z-axis, use the upper part of the z-axis control element. This pin icon saves a specific field of view. It saves the exact X, Y, and Z position where the sample was at the time it was pinned. To do so, all you must do is be in the position you want to pin the location 
and click on the pin position button. Let's pin other areas so you can understand how it works. To navigate the pinned area, go to the info bar, click the position button. This is nice because it allows you to move throughout the sample in live view mode and revert to a location on the sample with ease. You can also rename the position And if you want to delete the position, simply click here. With the Acquire Z Stack button, you can either capture multiple pictures of the current view in different focus planes or Z positions and export them in a separate folder with the stack or merge all of these pictures in one image with Fusion. This is helpful for uneven samples which contains objects in different Z positions or heights. Let's select the fusion first. Move the fine drive down to the lowest point of the pictures you would like. Then click next. That's to define the lower limits. And now we'll do the same for the upper one. Move the fine drive up to the highest desired point and click next. We just defined the travel range and now at this Z stack configuration window, we will define the distance between each picture being taken. You can now choose between minimum, maximum, or default step size in microns. Once we click next, we have to choose the location where these images will be stored. Let's see the file. And there is our fused image. To capture multiple pictures of the Z positions, we will follow the same process, but we will now select the stack export type. Again, let's define the lower and higher limit and the travel range. Let's open up our folder again, and there is a folder where all the pictures are being taken throughout the Z position. Small note, there are so many images because we selected the minimum travel range. The last feature that we will cover is the snapshot. In the upper right corner next to the Z stacking button, the camera like icon will allow you to take a screenshot of the whole viewport. You can save your screenshot as a TIFF, JPEG, PNG, or BMP. Finally, we have the autofocus and the focus plane buttons. Focus plane is the anchor for the automated focusing. 
It provides the basis point for the autofocus in the other modes. By setting the focus plane to a certain height, it saves this height position, and if the software is closed and reopened, it will move to this height again. The autofocus in this mode uses the current Z position as the basis point, not the saved focus point. Well, that was simple. We'd like to read your comments and questions. Let us know what you'd like to see from us. Of course, everything will be linked in the description as well as where to find us. Like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, everyone.